So my document at the moment shows the home screen, the art screen, the computer screen. We just took a moment to create these sub pages. See how they animate over. Let's talk for a moment about the transitions. Um, the transition that's built in is the fade transition, which just makes one screen fade into another. So we uh, change the animation to slide, and we get this slide animation. Let's look at a few others. So let's go to lines. Um, let's start with line 165. That's where it says data transition slide. That's the animation. At the moment, slide is the animation. Let's try this. Select data tran or type data transition slide up. Slide up, one word. Save and run that. What will happen now is that the screen will still load, but now it'll slide up into view. Click that, slides up. Press the back button, slides down. It has the built-in forward and backward animation. Pretty smart. Slide up. So we've got slide. Make a note of that one. We'll look at the other ones in a moment. But we've got slide. We've got slide up. Here's one you can try. Uh, try uh, flip. So go back to slide up and select flip. There's flip. Page flips over. What's that? Well, to each of their own. Let's see what else is there. Um, okay, you can do that one, which is even worse. Uh, you can do turn. Try that. That's supposed to turn like a page in a book. Turn. So data transition turn kind of makes the screen turn over. Question? Is there a way to set the speed that it goes? I believe so. We'll have to write some custom JavaScript, I think, or look at the documentation. Um, but the default usually works pretty well, but I, I believe if we look at the documentation, we'll see exactly how to change it. Off the top of my head, I don't remember. OK, so that's turn. Um, Here's another one. Uh, this one's pretty flashy. Um, you can try flow. F L O W. Flow. How would you describe flow? I would say over the top. It's like you kind of take the screen and you flick it to the side. Obviously, that's very eye-catching. That's what I have in my example uh, page. But you can choose which one you want. And I think that's all of them. I'm going to refer back to jQueryMobile.com for a moment just to look up the other ones. jQueryMobile.com. Under the the demos, the latest version, and if we look at uh, transitions here under pages and navigations, you'll see you'll see actually I remember there's a couple others. But if you go to transitions under page navigation, you can look up what else there is. Okay, so we did fade, we didn't do pop. There's flip, turn, flow, slide, fade, slide, slide up, slide down, and none. And this shows you what it looks like if it's a dialogue or a page. So with flip, there's the whole page flipping, turn, etc. The one we didn't do is pop, which works best on a dialogue box, actually. But this can be applied to dialogue boxes or full pages, and some of them work best on some and some worse on others. But there's not too many. And uh, it says here, important, some platforms currently have issues with transitions. We're working on a solution to solve the problem for everyone. If you're experiencing flicker and flashes during or at the end of your transition, we suggest the following workaround. And then you can read that. 
but uh, probably somewhere here, setting a transition, global browser support, fallback, max width, same page. We can continue to read and see if there's a way to customize the speed. Probably found in one of the longer, more techie documents. But jQuery Mobile explains all of the built-in um, CSS-based transitions through AJAX the time navigation. Of the, transition. the time of the transition. I think if we look at the documentation somewhere, we'll be able to find it, but I don't see it here. It might be in one of the other documents. Yes. Is it the type of thing that you could set once, like in your CSS file, or like one time as a master and value, and then have your transitions the same way? Specifically for the speed or the type of animation? No, the like if you wanted everything to be flipped. You could. Um, it'll you require. Every yeah, it'll require uh, some JavaScript to set up variables and dynamic data and such. So. We're seeing that jQuery Mobile can uh, save us a lot of trouble here and there, but then in other places it's not as smart as it could be, but we could use other things uh, to fully implement that. But out of the box, you do have to do it manually. A bad user experience if your transitions were always... Definitely. So that's a good point. If your transitions are, are different from element to element, not good. But if they make sense to be different depending on the element, that's fine. Like, for example, uh, on my example, I've got that animation everywhere here through the, these main navigation elements. And then on these, these swipe over, because that sort of makes sense to me, at least, just to swipe this data over. And then you've got one more type of animation right here, which is pop. So yeah, it's three different animations. Maybe it's overkill. But if they make sense for the type of element, those three elements animate the same. These three elements animate the same. Yeah, if you mix different different elements on the same yeah. page. Mm -hmm. Question. So what's a relationship between uh, jQuery and jQuery mobile? Can you use the jQuery commands? Yeah. Yeah, because our code shows at the top here we've referenced the, the full jQuery features. So you are able to do jQuery, whatever you know of jQuery, to also use it in jQuery mobile. The, the thing about jQuery mobile is it's specifically for the mobile device, mobile friendly type of um, <laughs> content or, or or tricks. Question. So, so is it more like the buttons etc which are customized for mobile? Yeah, like this whole nav bar at the top, that's what's making it behave that way. It's the jQuery mobile. Uh, these animations are from jQuery mobile. But everything else you know how to do in jQuery should apply. Question. Oh, okay. So you can say transition delay. Um, probably. We probably have to mix up C mix the CSS three transition property with this. So we can look into it. But uh, I'm sure there's a way to to alter that to our liking. So this is what we've got so far. So you can decide what you want to have for that. And notice, yeah, you do have to add it for each button. You add the data transition to wherever you've got a link. So the button is where you add the transition, and then it applies it to the page you're going to end up at. I'm going to keep it with slide. Uh, actually, I'll do slide up. I kind of like slide up. Uh, so those two I'll have is slide up. And um, the other things I will... The default is fade. That's what's happening for those. <coughs> yes. Mm -hmm. The animation doesn't work. 
well, check your spelling. If it's spelled wrong, it won't work. And if it doesn't work, it's okay for the moment. This is a little bit of the icing on the cake. As long as the link works and it shows your content, because eventually when we get to the part about, well, this is going to be a web app, and maybe someone is going to visit this in Firefox uh, version 6, and maybe some of this won't work, the, the animations, for example. But if the content loads up, that's as best as we can do. And when we get to the part about turning it into a full-featured Android app, well, if someone comes to it with Android 2.1, we're going to be targeting 2.2 to 4.4. Well, they're out of our range of targets, so they, theirs also might not work very well. And actually, because I've got two Android devices, one, one is a 4.1 and one is a 2.3, and I noticed that, that, the, um, that the flip animation looks behaves really weird on the older Android device. It makes the... I'm expecting the page to do a little flip like this, and what it does is a flip like this. It's weird. It goes like a circle. The same code, it works weird on the two devices. So again, uh, we try to do the best that we can, but the, the great thing about Linux, uh, or that is uh, uh, Android, is that anyone can, can change it as they wish, but the bad thing about it is that anyone can change it as they wish. <laughs> So every manufacturer changes the version of Android a bit, and uh, you might have different experiences. But uh, that is what we've got so far. It's going along pretty well. I want to I want to deal now with um, back on my example on the home screen. We've got this icon right here on the home screen, which then does a little pop up. I want to work on that now. So let's go back to where we've got the home screen code. The issue came up about, this is getting a little unwieldy. We've got, you know, over 200 lines of code. But when you have experience, that's not unwieldy. Uh, but here is, uh, we want to get to the section where welcome is at. This is where I would say that the find feature comes in, because I believe we've only got the word welcome in one part in the whole project. So in Notepad, if you control F to find welcome, and then you can even put capital welcome, because you might have welcome elsewhere and case match it. That should take you exactly to the only place that welcome is found in the document. Line 52. So go to welcome on line 52. That takes us back to the home screen. And I want to create a button that opens up this little pop-up window. Uh, so here's how we'll do it. Line 60 or slash 60 is what ends. Line 60 is slash div which ends the content. So right above that make a new line. So between the two slash divs that slash div ends the grid which we haven't used yet. So we got slash div slash div. Make a line right there. And we'll make um, we'll make a new paragraph here. And we'll write um, about SDCE. We'll wrap an A tag around that. It's going to be a link. href pound about. We don't have an about page, so that won't go anywhere, of course. But we're setting ourselves up so that when you click this about text, the link will take us to the about <laughs> screen, which we'll create in a moment based on the intcom page. Okay, so we're going to we're going to create another page. So then again, we're going to add more lines of code to this one document and and it was asked uh, well, yeah, it's getting unwieldy. There's a lot of code here. Can't we break it up? Can't we have an about.html file? A basic computers.html file? We could. 
but we won't because then we cannot have the transitions. Uh, uh, we, if we want to transition smoothly from one screen to another, we need to keep it all within one document. And for other features of jQuery Mobile, we should keep it into we should keep it all in one document. So let's go back to the very bottom. This is enough of a skeleton that we can reuse for the about screen. So that means I'm going to copy. You're going to copy your whole data roll of page. Don't forget the closing div. Div data roll page. ID is about, not pound about. The pound only exists when you've got the href. What's that? At the end? Copy and paste. At the end. Right there. Before the slash body. The H1 here, I'll change that to about SDCE. I've got a data roll of content, that's good. And I don't know, I'll write something on the H2. We'll write um, celebrating one hundred years. So let's save that and run it, and what should happen is you've got a link on the, uh, on the home screen. Click it and it should open a new page. We've still got a lot to do for it to actually behave like my example. But at least let's set this up. So my about screen, there's a link, pretty ugly, but we'll make it look better. If you click on it, there's the about screen with back. If it works like that, at least you're on, we're on track. If it doesn't, let's fix it and then we'll make it look nice. Question. So again, if something works with a little copy and paste, we can reuse it, save ourselves some effort. <coughs> okay, so um, the page, this is going to be a pop-up, but by the default, it acts like a page. So we need to go back to the home screen where the button exists and change a few things there. So let's go back to the very top, line 52 or so. Sixty-one. Line sixty-one. There's the link. I think we did this when we first got our little taste of jQuery Mobile, so here's a little recap. This is a plain old link, but now we will add to it data role button. So that about SDCE will become from a from a plain old blue underlined link into a button.
I'm going to add an icon, data-icon. Uh, let's do info. Data dash icon POS equals no text. I've turned it into a button. I've given it an icon and I've removed the text so that it just shows the icon. And then one more item here. Uh, now we need to say this will behave like a uh, dialog box. So we'll have data, rel, relationship equals dialog. And what that does is it makes the, the page that's coming into a dialog box instead of a page. There it is. So taking that plain old link and giving it a few data attributes, now it acts a little bit more like a modern um, modern element. Question. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Yes. So if this code you know, you could break it into another line and that'll still work. So it's fine that it goes pretty far out there. Now actually, um, so this gives me a back button, but it's supposed to give me there a little X to close the screen. But because we've got the back button overriding it, we've got a back button. I don't want a back button, I want a little close button, like a real dialog box. So actually we do have to change that on this about screen. So we'll go back uh, to the very bottom. Remember on our about page here, there it is, data add back button. I'm just gonna remove that whole thing there. I guess we could put false, but if we remove it we'll save a, couple, we'll save a few bytes. Uh, so we don't need this back button anymore because this will, this will automatically have a close button because we've set the data rel dialog. So on line 219, I'll just remove that whole part, the data back button. And this is the point, that without specifying that, then I get a familiar little X button. So when the pop-up comes, the background information is removed Say that again? So when the pop-up is... It, it all has the effect of like fading out and we can actually uh, change that background color if we look it up on jQuery mobile we can change that color yeah 
yeah, you don't want to see back there, but you, you could if you want to. We'll get to the, um, remember in my example, once we see the About screen here, we, we, um, we have another button that takes us to look at the map. We'll deal with that a little bit later. That, that, that gets us a little bit more complex because then we're going to deal with a Google map that pulls real data. So we'll do that a little later. What I want to do is uh, fill in a little bit more of the project with uh, pictures and such. So uh, we're going to go online and gather a few pictures to put into the project. Um, we'll borrow most of them from the college's website and then we'll put pictures in and, and then style them and that sort of thing. But here's the project so far. So here's what we'll do. We'll go find some pictures online. Go to your web browser and let's go to sdce.edu. Okay, so each of these sections has a, a picture that we, that we might want. So if you click on Programs, you click on Programs, we've got this picture which is very wide, but, we'll, but this is actually pretty good because we'll, we'll, we'll use some tricks to perhaps show more or less of the picture as necessary depending on the size of the person's device. So if they're on a smaller device, perhaps this much of the picture is shown. But if they're on a tablet, perhaps this much of the picture is shown. So let's say we want to use this picture. Um, Right-click it and we should have the option of save image as Depends on your web browser, perhaps. I'm in Firefox. So I'm going to save this image inside of the project. There's my September 11 project. Open it. I'm going to open my mobile website folder. And I'm going to gather a bunch of images. So it's good practice to save our images in an images folder. So while I'm saving it here, I have the option on the screen to create a new folder up here. So in my mobile website project, I'm going to create a folder called Images. And then these images that I'm about to borrow will be saved there. So I've made an Images folder in the mobile website folder. This is going to be saved as org image. Um, maybe I'll call it um, students. Okay, so I saved one of the images. It's over from the program screen. I'm going to go to the student services screen, and I'm going to go in and save each of these. 
I'm going to use these file names just so that I can keep track of them. But um, question? You're not going to copy and paste. You're going to select Save Image As. So we're going to do Save Image As on that one, and I'll call this Two Students. You can call these whatever you want. Just make a note of what you're calling them because you're going to need to say their. You're going to need to write their names later. That's going to be two students. What's that? This one is under the student services. So I'm going to save that one into the images folder. Next I'll go to the job training screen. I'm going to call that one training. Under organization, I'm going to save that one as um, graduates. So just to show you what I've got so far, these are the pictures and these are the names. The graduates, the training, the <coughs> students, students. Maybe we should call that group. But whatever you call these things, uh, when we use them, obviously, then we need to write the code for the proper name. So these can be anything you want, but those are the names I chose. There's a bunch of other images throughout the, the website. But um, we'll, I think we'll be okay with these for the moment. All right, so I want to use one of these pictures on the home screen. Remember, we've got a placeholder for an image. So if we go back to our code, let's go on line 53. This is where we've got that image tag source equals something, something. Inside of that source, inside of the quotes, remove what's there. So it currently points to a Kodika image placeholder. Remove that. This is on line 53. So that it just says source equals with quotes. And actually, whatever's inside of this style, well, we'll work with that in a moment. But I want to show the picture. Uh, so image source, we're going to use uh, graduates. This is our first picture here. 
So if we write graduates.jpg, that would work if the graduates picture were on the same folder as the index file, which it's not. Right? My index file is right here, and my pictures are not right here. So if I simply wrote source graduates, that would not work. Graduates is inside of images. So actually, we have to write images slash the name of the picture, graduates. So source is images slash graduates.jpg. And what that's saying is first go into this folder, this directory, and then you'll find what you're looking for. So save it and run it and see if your picture loads up. Well, my picture shows up, but not where I thought. And that's because the leftover CSS that Kodika gave us. Actually, we, we shouldn't have even used the Kodika placeholder because uh, I, I don't think this image, this image placeholder had too much baggage that didn't really work. So what we're going to do is if your picture shows up like that, then let's go in and remove this style, remove everything within the style, and we'll write some our, our own style, which is better. Um, so then I could put the word underneath it. Um, 
filed over like a, a center and the line kind of because I also have to leave it, right? Because it needs to be done. So I was like, I, it was really struggling. Just the way I was thinking, and so I just kept very nervous. I had so much work around. I found that the gym is my friend. I'm trying to bring
All right, so this um, picture shows up, but not how I envisioned. So the built-in style uh, is not what I like. So I'm going to remove everything that's in inside of the quotes of style right there. Because this style made sense earlier when there's, there was a picture inside of a box. We remove the box. So now this style is sort of making things look weird. So now if I save it and run it, there's the picture. And what I see is that if my, um, <clears throat> if my uh, screen is this big, it shows the whole picture. If my screen is that big, it shows that picture, but not really the way that I want. Uh, it is cutting it off, but not in a very smart way. For example, on the left side, I've got a little bit of a margin here, but not nothing on the right side. So we'll do a little bit of styling here. And actually, we should style a little smarter than what we've previously done, which is uh, we're not going to add inline style. This is inline style, which means that we're going to add CSS to this element. And we'll make it look good if we do it this way, but not very smart. Because maybe I need to apply what I'm about to do to 10 other pictures throughout my project. I don't want to copy and paste that nine other times. So actually, I'm not going to add any inline styling at this point. Um, I'm going to set this up through CSS. And the way that it will know that we are... We're going to write some CSS rules, and the way that it'll know that we're talking about this particular element is because it'll have a class. So after style here, well, let's do it before style. We'll write class equals, quote, end quote. Too many S's right there. Class. Um, OK, we've got the picture, alt image, we'll deal with that. Style, inline style. This would apply to this one element. I've got class before it. So the reason I put it before it is this will, this will, we're going to write a rule, some CSS, to affect that image. And if we wanted then a little bit more tweaking, we could add some more tweaking here. So first this will happen, and then this could tweak it if we want. That's why I wrote it that way. That's the part of CSS that it goes in order of precedence and all of that. But class will be a non-unique identifier. Now, the unique identifier ha have been ID equals something. Only one thing in the whole project can be called ID equals intcom. Only one thing can be called ID equals basecom. Class, we can reuse over and over throughout our, our project, and that's what we want. We want on this part of the project to be affected this way and this part the same way. Uh, so we'll call this... Um, We'll call this uh, wide IMG, capital I. And I made this up right now. What this means is we're going to write some CSS to say anything that is marked as wide image will be affected in the following way. So that's what class is. Um, we're going to link this element, this image, with this CSS. Wide image. So let's save it. We're not done yet. Now what we need to do is go to File, Open. And we're going to open that codica.ext.css file within our folder. So a notepad, let's open codica.extra.css. This file that's waiting for us will house all of our CSS. When we want to change our background color, it'll be saved there. When we're going to change this image, it'll be saved there. When we want to change every aspect of the design, it'll be saved there. So it'll be one central location for all our CSS. So open that. 
It says put your custom code here, your, your custom CSS here. So on the on line two, we'll write the name of the class we just wrote. Wide image. Notice I have a capital I. It is case sensitive. Space. Now we're gonna use a brand new character we haven't used before. This is the curly brace or the curly bracket, which is shift square bracket, which is next to the P. Couple of enters. Close curly brace. So if you just press the square brace, it's square, square. If you shift it, curly brace, curly brace. And then of course parentheses, angle brackets. <coughs> angle bracket. Imagine that's an angle bracket. For some reason. Oh, probably because it thinks it's a comment. Okay, so, um, okay, uh, wide image. So now here I can define some CSS rules. I can say make the image this wide, give it this background color, give it this drop shadow, etc. I can put all my CSS rules here. And wherever here I mark it as class equals wide image, it'll obey that. That's a smarter way than adding style equals something. Um, so before we do that, watch this. If you right-click your tab for your CSS file and select Move to Other View, you can have them side by side. If you right-click the tab, Move to Other View, it comes back. So I don't want to switch back and forth. I want to see them at the same time. Any of these tabs, right click, move to other view. So here I'm seeing the HTML file and it's got class uh, wide image. And now I'm going to say, what does wide image mean? Be sure that you've got capital I just like you wrote here. First thing we'll say is, with colon 100% semicolon. That could have been applied here. Style, quote unquote, with colon 100%. We're, applying, we're saving it there so that it can be applied back here. And everywhere else we, we link it to. Now that we're working with more than one file and we might have edited more than one thing, notice both of these are red. Now we could get into the habit of doing save all. If you were pressing just a single little floppy for save, you want to remember to do save all to save all open documents. There's a reason because this is a class. We need a dot. Sorry about that. We need a dot. Uh, so dot wide image. That's what marks it as a class. Remember when we've had id equals something, and then we had href equals pound that something? id is like a pound, and class is like a dot. So we need a dot. So well, why is it a dot? <laughs> That's the way it is. When they were inventing this in 1998, um, someone got the idea, let's use a dot for class, and it's stuck. Let's use a pound symbol for ID, and it's stuck. So you want to make sure both documents are saved. Run the index. Don't run the CSS because you'll just get a screen full of code. Run the, the HTML. 
and now it should um, it should shrink so that it shows the whole picture and when you stretch it it continues to be hundred percent the size of the screen Question. Uh, in the CSS, are the curly braces like the HTML tags that you can put them on the same line or yeah. lines? Yeah, you can even do it like this. Keep it on one line. That works. Usually with CSS we get more complicated. It's a good practice to break it up into multiple lines. You can also do this now that we're here. Box-shadow. Remember that one? Drop shadow. Uh, let's do 5px, 5px. Oh, wait, it's 5, 5, 5, 5, 5px, and then black. It'll come to me once I get it wrong, but um, yeah, you do write the px. There we go. So I've added another line of styling. Wherever I use wide image, also give it a box shadow. Okay, so this um, this works. It's going along an idea, but I've got a better idea. Notice if we are to increase our size like this, it grows to the size of the screen, sure. But I want to do something else. Notice if it's notice if it's that small, it shows the whole picture. But I don't, I didn't want, I didn't have that idea. My idea was that if I see a small, if I'm looking at it from a small screen, maybe I see this much. And then if I see it on a large screen, then I see that much. So actually, we need to do a little bit more here. This works, but there's better things to do. What we need to do is say, um, we need to introduce another property here called overflow, but we need to do it in a different way, in that uh, we're going to define a size sort of like a window. We're going to make a little window to look inside of it, and, I, and if my window is this big, I can only see that much of the picture. But if my window is that big, I can see more of the picture. So uh, I may or may not use the drop shadow. We can get back to that. Uh, and we're going to need to redo a little bit. But here's the concept. Uh, we're going to add another line and write uh, overflow, <coughs> colon, hidden, semicolon. Notice I'm writing a semicolon at the end of each line. If this was all in one line, I would still need the semicolons, overflow hidden. That means that if something goes outside of the boundaries, it will become hidden. But it won't work here yet because there are really no boundaries. I'm adding the wide image to the picture itself without it being inside of a box. Uh, so actually I need a box to cover this picture and then overflow should work. So this is what I'm saying about CSS, is that um, it seems like it works perhaps at one point and then it doesn't work at another because it's a puzzle piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna I'm gonna use this code but I actually need to apply it to a container outside of the picture. So let me do it first and then we'll do it. 
Um, I guess we shouldn't have removed it, but we're going to need a, a div around the image. And then that one will have the class of wide image. And then we don't need wide image here. Okay, so now let's look at this difference. We'll do it together in a moment. It's showing this much of the picture in the container. And then if I had a larger device, it would show more of the picture. See the difference? And then at a certain point it runs out. But the difference is that it's not growing and shrinking to the size of the of the screen, it's showing you more or less as necessary based on the screen size. So let me let me backtrack so we can do it together. Let's go back to where our image tag is at, and we're going to add above and below it the div pair. So add a div around the add a div uh, around the image, and as I said, anywhere where we write class equals um, white image, it will obey or it will it will inherit these CSS rules that we create. So we can add a class to this div. Class equals, and the same one we've been dealing with, wide image. So we're applying wide image to the div, to the container. And then we're going to remove wide image from the image itself. So on the image itself, I'll remove the class of wide, nothing in class. And that should be the result. So by adding wide image to this div, now we've defined a box. And then our overflow hidden is saying anything outside of the box, hide it. So notice it cuts off there. And as the box get, gets bigger, it shows more of the original picture. Question? Yeah, can you center the picture as you make it wider, um, expand it? I believe so. This should be a property. Um, background align. There's a property I'm blanking on it at the moment, but there's a property where we can set things. Then you'd have to have an image in the background. Yeah. Margin auto. Let's see, 
Mm, no. There is a way <coughs> to center it. Maybe not maybe not in wide image. Maybe we'd have to create another rule. <coughs> There's a way to do it definitely, but I have to think about it a bit. Now also, uh, we still got our drop shadow and it looks nice on the right side, but then at the bottom there's like this weird little gap there. And it's come up before, and I know we, we've solved it in a previous class, but I don't remember at the moment. Um, what's that? Yeah, but uh, there is a way to. So this is right and this is top. It's one zero. Um, there, sh there is a way. See, there's still going to be some weird thing down there. Even if I put, I guess, a negative number, there is a way to get that little bit out of there, and it's, it's something, but I don't remember what. Some student pointed it out last time, with some digging around in there, but there is some property to cancel that out. I don't think it's a margin or a padding. There's something there. So this is what I'm saying about the CSS stuff. It seems to be pretty straightforward on the surface, but there's all of these details because everything has an inherent default value. There's automatically a certain amount of margin. There's automatically a certain amount of line height. If we don't deal with that, there's the default. There's something here that we'll probably find out, but an easy way to fix that is also just remove that box shadow. There we go. But then we don't have the box shadow. Maybe you don't want the box shadow when you do. Yeah. Uh, let's see what happens there. Oh, we have to write more CSS. But yeah, we could uh, write some more CSS to add to the picture itself. Let's see what happens if we add it here. <coughs> that seems to work. So one possible thing to do is put the box shadow on the style of the picture itself. Although I would like it to apply to every picture, because now this only applies to this picture. Question. Can you apply it to make it a, a dog thing? Like, um, so don't the don't the CSS styles just go in one? So like you style the div, so then any images in that div in one black shadow. Oh so sure, like yeah. You could do okay. image here. And does other things too. Um, you just need to have a second, a second selector. Oh yeah. Like that? No, I meant the completely separate. Oh, selector. separate one there. Yeah, that's about writing some more, etc. So there's always something that will not quite work, and then you work at it a bit, and then you figure it out. Uh, patience. So uh, I'll leave it like this for the moment, and then we'll figure out the details. But uh, let's take one more short break, 10 minutes. And we'll do a little bit more. Maybe add a couple more pictures, a little more text. That's what I've got so far. So it's 8.32. We'll be back at 8.42. Uh, we'll go on. <coughs>